Good morning and welcome to the Charlesy and Percy Go Show brought to you by White Up and Bush live on Facebook and also YTV. My name's Anton Persico and I'm joined here this morning with um, uh, unprepared Mark Charles. Charlesy, we've got some treats in front of us. We've got some amazing treats uh, here this morning, Persico and Morena, everybody. Uh, looking forward to another great weekend of rugby. Yeah, our sponsors from McDonald's here. Uh, obviously, we've got those 500 cheeseburger batches. That's right. Away, That's which right. you gave some away last week, I believe. Uh, yep, we've got our hot chocolates here uh, with the uh, bacon egg McMuffin combos. Our PG chips. PG chips. And our, uh, our six uh, Daniel Ingham chickens. Six chooks. We've got uh, frozen chooks. Frozen now, chooks. Uh, thank you very much to Vita Isaac. You came through uh, on our little wager that we had for the grand final, and um, I was expecting a live chickens, uh, uh, chickens to be alive. I did build a chicken coop in the backyard, however, <laughs> these things are rock hard, T. But thank you for coming through. Well, oh, Lannister always pays his debts. He does. He is no different. So, first of all, we want to thank our sponsors, and uh, one of those is McDonald's and Masterton. Uh, thank you very much, Andre and Leone. Also, Barbershop Geordie, um, for your contribution with your uh, vouchers. Uh, the White Swan in Greytown, and also Ray White, who are sponsoring the Pick the Score competition. Now, nobody got that last week, so Charlesy, that has jackpotted to $400 this week, and uh, we'll be telling you the game of the round shortly. It has, yeah. Sorry, I'll, I didn't tell you about that before. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, no worries. But um, you're doing pretty well in the real estate market at the moment, so it shouldn't hurt the pocket that much. Well, you know, we'll just get the team to pitch in. No problem. Now, we've got a massive uh, weekend and week of rugby, and to help us um, go through some of these events that are happening, um, and we've got a guest speaker with us today, Tony Hargwood. Tony, thanks for coming on the show. How are you this morning? Oh, I'm great. Thanks, guys. Good to see you. Um, look, um, fantastic start to your show last week. Um, yeah, I see that picture in the background there. It looks like it's been Photoshop. I'm sure I've got more here. Um, uh, look, uh, stats, nearly 3,000 people watched the show last week. That's, that's, that's amazing. So, well done. You're very popular. Um, and deliver a great product to our rugby community. Well done, guys. 2,800 of them were Charles. The other 200 were me. <laughs> hey, so, uh, that leaves Tony, you with about 20 then, Anton. Uh, Tony, we've got a uh, pretty big weekend with JAB Rugby. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, no, look, fantastic. Love the JAB. Um, I think we all have memories of when we played JAB and our first tries and everything like that, so it's fantastic. So it really kicks off this weekend with a lot of festival rounds. Um, so we've got the under sixes um, at Pioneer and Greytown. We run the north-south uh, competition there. Um, the under eights, starting down Clumber Road, uh, Marston Red Star. Maris hosts the under nines this year. Um, the under tens are at Carterton. Uh, and the under 11s... Um, yeah, various teams, but the 13s, sorry, under 11s and 13s at different grounds. Um, so, look, really good numbers through the through the uh, under 6s, under 8s, and under 9s, double. We had 50 in the under 9s last year. We were nearly close to 100. So, absolutely brilliant. So, thanks to all the parents. Thanks to all the uh, the kids out there, and I just hope they have a wonderful, wonderful time. Yeah, cool. Thanks, Tony. Um, also, on Wednesday, the Festival of Rugby. Now, this is all the the, the four college sides. So it's uh, uh, Waikol, Waikol second, uh, 15, Rathkill second, 15, Makota first, 15, and Kuranui first, 15. They will play uh, in three 20-minute games, and that starts at 4.30 on Wednesday. So get down to Trust House Memorial Park and support your local school team. Um, now, Charles, are you going to do something a little bit different today? We're going to cover a little bit of netball. We're going to cover a little bit of netball. I've been copping a bit of fake from a person that will remain un unnamed. Um, so thanks, Tess Newton, for providing me some information uh, on the netball competitions running this year in the Wairarapa. So this is a rugby and sports show, um, but mostly we've been covering rugby, of course. But, yeah, look, the netball, a very popular winter sport uh, amongst our fraternity. So just some teams to watch out for in the premier grade. Uh, Harcourt's defending champions from last year. Uh, they're going to be strong again. So, look, they've got Geraldine Carroll running the show there, and they picked up... Uh, a new recruit from St. Matt's and Gracie Donaldson. So uh, they'll be uh, very, very strong again in that competition. Last year's runner-up, Carterton, looking strong again. Evie Langlands, that's uh, Grant Langlands' daughter, uh, and Julie Malcolm, two of their stronger players. Um, Greytown, well, of course, always strong at most sports. Um, Paige Drummond um, and Jesse Smith, um, they've picked them up in the off-season. Very tall team and should be competitive. Um, Celtic, don't know a lot about them, um, so can't really comment. St. Matt's have lost a few. They might be in a rebuilding stage, St. Matthews, this season. So 
Um, they could possibly drop to pin two, but um, they won't know after the grading games. Um, Waikol will, will be okay again this year. Um, and the Carterton Legends, now this is a team of um, more mature women by all accounts, um, but once again, um, they're, they're going to be putting their, their team in this competition. You've got to watch out for them, Wiley characters in that team. So good luck to all the netball players this weekend. Cool. Thank you, Charles. Yeah, good luck uh, with the netball. Now, um, we have a competition uh, running, which is the Photo Bomb Tony Harwood competition. I've got a few entries uh, sent through to me over the weekend, and here's one right here with uh, Tony Harwood talking to Shane Colton and uh, Rachel in the background photo bombing them. So, Rachel, you're the current leader. Um, remember, if you see Tony Hardwood ARing on the street, then an important meeting more it would be the best. Get in there and photo bomb him because there's $500 up for grabs. Now, Tony, I've got one more question for you, and this is um, regarding – I saw you on the news last week. Uh, this is regarding the Silver Lake deal with uh, New Zealand Rugby Union. Um, tell us, Tony, what does this mean to White Upper Bush Rugby? Well, yeah, thanks. Um, look, this is a really obviously a very, very important subject. It's, um, it's probably been pretty well reported in the newspaper and media. Um, it, it's a great opportunity to sort of uh, reset where rugby's going around the world and professionally. But more importantly, and the critical thing here, is the, is the opportunity to reinvest back into the community game. So um, as you all know, the Heartland Unions, we're, we're very firm behind this uh, proposal. Um, we're, we've we know a bit more detail than that, that that we can release at the moment just because of confidentiality reasons. Um, but the reinvestment into the community game, and I'm not talking about provincial unions, but also down into the clubs and the communities as well too. So, um, you know, it's, it's going to be a great opportunity. The world's changing out there. The technology's changing. You know, what we're doing here with you guys with with, with your podcasts and um, shows as well too, it's, it's a real changing world out there. So... Um, uh, so all the 26 unions, uh, hours and hours of work behind it, um, <clears throat> and um, you know I think it's 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 going to be a massive step forward uh, for all of us and 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 for the clubs. I've got funny a question. I've got the it's a minority shareholding, isn't it? Around 12.5 percent. Yes. The yes. corporate. So yeah. well, clearly they don't have a majority shareholding. So the interests of New Zealand rugby and the grassroots level, etc., should be protected, shouldn't it? Oh, absolutely. So there'll, there'll be an eight-member board. Five of the members are um, New Zealand Rugby, uh, and New Zealand Rugby always holds a majority vote. So this is really about the revenue, the commercial side. Uh, can, I'm going to get you a really interesting fact here. So up in Europe, um, the All Blacks and New Zealand Rugby rate either their favourite team or their second favourite, 47%. Um, the global revenue that we get up there is only 7%. So let's start doing doing some maths about what's actually happening. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's 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 going to be a good reset. Um, pretty excited about it. Um, let's hope it all comes across the line for everybody. Yeah, cool. Now, Tony, you retired as a commentator last year. You had a good little stint. Um, but you're moving... I think I was sacked. Stint. I don't think I retired. Yeah, I got yeah. sacked. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, it, was a it was a voluntary termination, correct? Um, but uh, you're moving into assistant referee. Are you? I believe you're going to be doing a game at the Gene Street this weekend. Uh, yeah, the uh, reserve game Gene Street uh, Pioneer Marist. Um, yeah, no, I was uh, making a debut last week out at Forty Armour, but uh, Martin Burrow, um didn't quite get there in the reserve comp. So I felt like that All Black that got selected but never played a Test match. So um, yeah, hopefully this time uh, the gods are with me. I'm okay, looking forward so to it. It's great, great ground, great people. So you are AR at a Pioneer versus Maris game at Pioneer? Yes, Correct? that's the one. You need yep. to be very careful. What, you putting that flag out there, son? <laughs> Let me give you the tip. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, I'm, 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 I'm all clubs. I'm all clubs. You know that, guys. I'm all clubs. Okay, you know that. Perfect opportunity to do some photo bombing down there at Gene Street for that match. Now, thanks, Tony. We're going to move on to some results uh, from last week. Now, uh, the first game we'll cover is Ekerahuna versus Gladstone. Charlesy Ekerahuna were gritty, uh, took their opportunities. Gladstone had a lot of possession, but uh, Ekerahuna too strong. Yeah, by all accounts, it was a brutal game up there with uh, some massive defence on show, talking to uh, Robbie Baby Chuck Anderson during the week. Yeah, so Ekerahuna showed a lot of heart and uh, provided a very good defence in that game, and, and it was their defence that won that match by all accounts. So, they had some plenty of ball, probably didn't use it as much as they, they would have wanted to, but 
yeah, great win for Ekitahuna to start the competition. Yeah, cool. And East Coast versus Martinborough. Uh, great start for Bruce and the boys from Martinborough. Uh, 45-22 uh, bonus point win versus East Coast. Uh, what do you know about this game? Well, we had a lot of points scored. I think Mount Martinborough ran away with it towards the end of the match, uh, by all accounts, scoring a number of tries at the end. So, yeah, I thought that game would be closer than this. It was tight up until probably 15, 15, 15 20 minutes to go, and Martinborough ran away with it. So, well done, Brucey and the Martinborough boys. That'll give them a lot of heart um, going forward. And Coast, well, look, I expect a, a strong performance from them this weekend, bouncing off the back of that. Yeah. Um, Carterton Maris, 27 nil at half time. Carterton, I was about to uh, get the papers to join the Great Town Rugby Club at that stage, but uh, Maris showed a really gritty second half, but Carterton just blew them off the park in that first half. Yeah, yeah, they did. Boy. You're all club, Josie. Well, I, I can't remember playing for Carterton. When you had the middle off crosses? Oh, then, no, those yeah. days. Yeah, yeah. I sort of blank from my memory. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Carterton, very strong first half and put some a lot of good phases of play together. Uh, but Maris. Showed a ton of improvement in the second half and won that 7-0. So they can build on that for this weekend, yeah, I believe. They played a very strong bench, and in the second half, they, they fought back. So um, Greytown, 43-8 over Pioneer. Now, Pioneer were gritty in this. Um, the scoreline doesn't really do it justice, but, geez, Greytown, you guys are looking good. Yeah, I think well, credit to Pioneer. They, they never gave up in that game. They scored the last try. And there's some good leadership on show in that in that team and their management group, their coaching group. And I was impressed with what I heard on the field. We're behind the posts. And um, John T. Miller, I was impressed with his captaincy. And Nick Iwi had a, a stormy match in the midfield there. And he did. Everything was positive. Um, I'm expecting Pioneer to pose problems for teams in this competition from what I saw on the weekend. Yeah. And that scoreline doesn't reflect that match at all. Um, our team, yeah, we, we were probably not running to full capacity of what what we're capable of doing, but yeah, Pioneer, I think, will cause some problems for some teams this year. Yeah, I really do think when Great Town, when you guys can just get those passes and stick, Charles, and you're going to, um, I think you could beat any side by 40 points on the day, so it's a, a bit of stuff for you to work on as well. Right, that leads us to the play of the week. Charles, I'll get you to um, talk us through this one. This was, um, what happened, uh, Tavita Isaac, 50 metres from the line. Well, he made a break from the back of the scrum. A like, cracking like, break. Like a cracking break. High yeah. hands to the line. High hands and, and 40 metres to go. The line was there. Well, 10 metres yeah. to go, it looked like he was running backwards on a treadmill. Well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I'd never say that about to people. But look, the person that stopped this made an absolute... He came out of nowhere, Shane Harmon, and you've got to tip your hat to Shane. He came yeah, out yeah. of nowhere. He made a massive tackle on the line. Mate, made, a, made a massive tackle. Yeah. A, a ball. He grabbed the ball yeah. and, he, and, he, and he tried to knock it out. He couldn't, but then look at what's happened here. And then, but the carnage didn't stop there. So, uh, to me, guys, it goes over the line. Alistair Payne, try. Jeffrey's try. Try. And then, and, and, and then Eagle not, Eye, Eagle Eye Dean Gooden comes charging in from the sideline, calling no try. He goes, no, no try. The AR, Dean Gooden, no try, no try. Right in front of all the Greytown, uh, Greytown locals. And yep. he copped a mouthful, too. Oh, he, co- he absolutely copped it. He absolutely copped it. The, the famous grandstand there in yep. the house. Backing onto the ground, <laughs> they were up and Adam and Dino's no try, knock on, knock on, and, <laughs> and everyone's into him. And uh, look, a few of us had to come and see him down there. And uh, well, look, the camera never lies, does it? And, and they made, made the correct call. So Shane Harmon, uh, tackle of the year so far. You're going to pick yourself up a Jordy uh, barbershop Jordy voucher, and we're going to give one to you. He's going to give himself his own haircut. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the Dean Gooden, Dean Gooden, the call of the year so far. You're going to pick yourself up. The you. Obama shop joining voucher. <laughs> All right, now let's move on to player of the week. Now, Chelsea, this is a young halfback out of Martinborough. His name's Shane Colton. Um, on debut for Martinborough, straight out of Rathfield College, had a blinder of a game, scored one try. Um, you know much about this kid? Nothing. Nothing? <laughs> Thanks. Well, he played very well. So, Shane Colton, um, great start to your premier career, and you'll pick yourself up a, a, a $50 white swan voucher. So, well done, Shane, a, a young promising player. Well, Robbie Anderson picked up player of the week from uh, Chris Colgill in the Times Age, so obviously a good game from yeah. Chuck there. And, and also uh, to be the Isaac. And to be the Isaac was well. outstanding for Greytown. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Cool. Okay, games for this weekend. It all starts with the country division, East Coast, Host Ekerahuna. Um, who have you got for this one, Charlton? Oh, Coasties at home again. I think they're going to bounce back and play better, but I like the look of Ekerahuna. So I'm going to take them to win on the road. 
Yeah, I'm going to back coast here. I think Ekaterina is strong at home, but um, but uh, can't win away. So East Coast for me on this one. Uh, then the next match, and the, all these games are at 235 today. Uh, Gladstone take our uh, host Martinborough. Uh, who you got for this one? I think Brucey started well with the Martinborough team. Gladstone uh, incredibly tough to beat at home there. Another very close game in my books. I'm going to go. I'm going to go for Gladie at home though. Yeah, yeah. Bounce back from last week. And I'm, I'm going to back you, Brucey, and all the Marty guys. So I've got Martinborough on this one now. A lot of pressure here for East Coast and Gladstone because. Uh, didn't win a game last week. Um, it wouldn't be a good start to the season to drop your first two either, would it? No, it wouldn't be. Um, but look, even if one team does do that, they can always bounce back. There's, That's uh, right. Yeah. Still a lot, a lot of rugby to go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in the town competition, this is going to be a pretty cool game. Carterton versus Greytown. Um, both of these sides coming off good wins last week. Um, Charles, obviously, you're, you're going to back Greytown here. What are some of the things that you're going to try and improve on from last week? Well, I suppose it's just full retention, really, for our team and, and not pushing that pass. We squandered a number of opportunities last week through doing that. So that's been a real focus this week. But this match is for the Grant Cup. Now, this is the biggest match of the preliminary rounds for both these two sides. So there's always a lot of passion involved in the Grant Cup. Uh, it stems back around 34 years ago when uh, Aisha Grant passed away very, very tragically in the Carterton Club rooms during a match between Carterton and Greytown. So there's a magnificent trophy up for grabs every year in this match in the first round. So you'll see some passion. You'll see some fire. Um, yeah, we're really looking forward to it, and I'm, I'm sure Carterton is, is as well. Both teams will be well prepared, so if you're around Carterton uh, on Saturday, come down to the ground and watch it. It should be a really good game of rugby. Cool, and if you're hanging around Marston and say, get down to Jean Street at 2.35pm because Pioneer are hosting Maris, this is going to be an absolute cracker, and Maris are a little bit wounded at the moment, and it's a really good opportunity for Pioneer to um, inflict a, bit, a little bit more pain. What do you think? I think so. Pioneer on their home track. Uh, dangerous from what I saw last week. Stacks of improvement left in them. There's some fitness there as well. So I expect this to be another close game. Yep. Yep. I've got Maris by seven on this one. I'll take Pioneer. I think they can cause an upset. All right. Cool. So the other games for today, uh, all kickoffs at 2.35. Our pick the score competition is the match of the round is Carterton versus Greytown, two undefeated sides. So it's $400 uh, in the comments below. It's the first to comment. You've got to pick the winning team in the exact margin. Uh, please don't text me and say what's the prize for the closest like Leith Harley did last week because, Leith, you did get the closest. Uh, how, is, is that a fly on the screen? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is real grass, Sorry. grassroots technology. Sorry, that was a fly that walked across the screen there. Um, so, Leith Harley, please don't do that again. You were the closest. However, you do win a voucher. But absolutely nothing. So we're going to send you out a blank piece of paper and enjoy that prize. Um, Chauncey, the What About You campaign. What About You campaign has kicked off really well. Um, I, I did talk about this a lot last week. Look after your mates. If you're feeling down, feeling low. Look, I helped out a, a guy this week uh, with a couple of my other friends. Um, he was down. We chatted to him. It's amazing what can happen a couple of three days later for people when you just talk about things. So reach out and then please people who are listening. Have those big cuttingers. And uh, look, watch your drink and take as well, fellas. That's right. I, I stole a pen the other day. I don't know where from, but when I got home, I realised it was a What About You campaign pen, Chelsea. So it gives you a few tips here on what to do this weekend. Do you want to read that out? Heading out, this weekend. out this weekend. Have fun and plan ahead to get home safely. Arrange a ride, offer to be the sober driver. Yep. Great advice. If you're driving, avoid alcohol and drugs. Even if you're not driving, avoid drugs. Absolutely. Put your phone out of reach. Don't be texting on your phone while you're driving. Check items, can't roll onto the floor under your feet. Yep. Watch yep. out for others on the road Definitely. and adjust your speed and bad weather. All great advice from the What About You campaign. However, the weather looks good today, so um, we're going to get down to the ground and um, kick this off for today. So thanks for watching the Charles Ian Go show. Thank you very much, Tony Hardwood, for coming on the show. Uh, we'll see you next week.